What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is my entire sneaker collection. This has kind of become a trend for me over the last couple years. I love doing sneaker collection videos at the beginning of every year just as a way to archive all of the sneakers in my collection at that exact point in time. It just kind of gives me a cool way to look back at all of the sneakers that I had in my collection over the last couple years, the sneakers that I kept, the sneakers that I didn't keep, and even some like stragglers that somehow stayed in my collection for the last like 10 years. And this year is not going to be any different. In fact, this year I have about 100 pairs of sneakers in my collection. I know in my last sneaker collection video from last year, I said that I was going to get rid of a lot of sneakers and I did actually end up getting rid of like 40 pairs of sneakers but as you do as a sneaker collector you buy more sneakers when you don't need them and now my sneaker collection is once again up to around 100 pairs of sneakers but like last year I will be getting rid of some of the sneakers in my collection that I just never have time to wear and just like every year it's gonna be really hard getting rid of a lot of the sneakers in my collection but it has to be done because I know that this year I'm just gonna grab more sneakers that I don't need so might as well make space for them before they come in <laughs> but before we dive into the video I want to let you guys know about our brand new apothecary basics collection. So if you're new to the channel, you might not know that a couple years ago I started a sock brand with a friend of mine called Apothecary. And over the last year and a half, we've been dropping special edition collections that always seem to sell out within like the first hour, even when we don't intend them to. And because of that, we decided to launch the Apothecary Basics collection, which is always available and you can always pick up on our website. This collection is made up of the same socks that we use for our limited collections. They're all Apothecary 3.0 socks. They're incredibly comfortable. They fit very, very well and they look great with sneakers. And if you've been missing out on Apothecary collections, before, now you have the chance to grab new Apothecary socks whenever you want. So, if you guys want to grab any of the socks from the Apothecary Basics collection, which is now available, I've made sure to leave a link in the top of the description. But with all that being said, let's dive right into the sneaker collection. So unlike last year, I'm actually going to start things off with the shoes that I usually end these videos with, and that's the shoes that I designed myself. So this shoe, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, is the Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origin, my very first signature shoe. There's a whole vlog series on my channel about how I designed this sneaker and going to Portugal to check out the factories that made this sneakers. I love this sneaker and if you guys have been watching the channel for a while you probably have heard about this sneaker a lot because when this sneaker dropped I couldn't stop talking about it. So this was the first colorway. The second colorway was the We Are Underdog Seth Fowler under construction. This was sort of a triple collaboration of sorts. We worked with a graphic designer called Jason Negrito Diaz and he was able to adjust my silhouette a little bit to create this super cool sort of deconstructed look which I absolutely love. Huge shout out to Jason. He's an incredible designer and he's also actually done some collections of Apothecary sucks so I've collaborated with them on multiple occasions and not just on sneakers which is kind of dope. Next up we've got the We Are Underdog Seth Fowler Vittoria Ravens. This shoe was inspired by my love of the Baltimore Ravens and also the founder of We Are Underdog's love of his soccer team Vittoria. Um, it's a super clean sneaker it's definitely sort of a business casual look which I like. It's got a gum outsole some nice suede on the upper and tumbled leather. Really love the way this shoe looks. I have yet to wear it to a Ravens game because this shoe came out after COVID started and I've not been to a Ravens game since then. After that we've got another J Jason Negrito Diaz collaboration. This time this is the We Are Underdog Seth Fowler Under Construction Asphalt. It's a long name, I know, but it's because the shoe is like a triple collaboration, so those names are always longer. But this is probably my favorite version of the We Are Underdog Seth Fowler Origin. I love the way this shoe looks. I love the materials used on this sneaker. And you can't really go wrong with a black and white sneaker. Like, this is a shoe that's super easy to wear for pretty much any situation. And then the final We Are Underdog Seth Fowler Origin to release was the Under Confusion colorway. This is sort of a, a what the version of the sneaker. It features a lot of different materials from pretty much all the other colorways that we did. In fact, I think there was five colorways of this shoe, which is kind of nuts. But this is a wild looking sneaker. I love the way it looks. My signature is on the back like all the other sneakers in the collection, which is super cool. And uh, I'm super grateful to Wear Underdogs for giving me the opportunity to design my own shoe. That's kind of nuts. Speaking of nuts, another shoe that I designed was the Planters Peanuts Crunch Force Ones. So this is actually the only shoe that I have on GOAT. You can actually grab a pair of these on GOAT right now, which is kind of crazy. But uh, this is a shoe that I designed for Planters Peanuts. You've got Mr. Peanut right there in the front. You've got the Planters logo on the back. And then the insole actually has some pictures of peanuts on it. It was designed after like an 80s basketball sneaker aesthetic. This was the first shoe that I ever designed that actually got produced. So that was super, super cool. And uh, whether you think it's nutty or not, um, it's one of my favorite shoes because of that fact and I actually still really like the way it looks. And then the final shoe that I designed are the We Are Underdogs Seth Fowler Granites. This is the second shoe that I designed for We Are Underdogs. This is just a sample of this shoe. There are a couple changes that are releasing on the final versions of this shoe. There's been some factory slowdown so that's why they haven't officially released yet. It was inspired after a retro runner. I think it's a super cool aesthetic and I'm really proud of this one. Like this is my favorite shoe that I've ever designed. I really love it and hopefully in the future I'll have more opportunities to design more sneakers. So if there's any brands out there like 
New Balance that uh, wants to work with me or Puma or Jordan Brand or Adidas. If anyone wants to work with me on designing a collaboration, hit me up. But sticking with We Are Underdogs, I've got a couple more pairs from the brand. I actually had more pairs, but I'm not sure exactly where they went. They're probably at my office or maybe in my garage. I'm not sure exactly, but this is the We Are Underdogs Obscure. This is a collaboration with the Instagram account Obscure Sneakers. Love the way it looks. I've actually worn this shoe a bunch. Super interesting and obscure looking sneaker. Next, we've got the We Are Underdogs Apostrophe. This is the second version of the comma. Super cool sneaker, I've met the designer, he's a really cool guy, love this shoe. Next up is a shoe by a YouTuber that I'm sure a lot of you guys have actually watched, and that is the Nightwing Ones. This is another We Are Underdog shoe, this is their only performance basketball shoe. Next up we've got the Dream Crew We Are Underdogs, this is Kais' shoe with We Are Underdogs. Super nice looking sneaker. And then the final shoe that I have from We Are Underdogs, at least in this room right now, is the uh, the We Are Underdogs Meraki. This is a shoe in collaboration with YouTuber Bluemont, very clean looking shoe. I really love this sneaker. I actually wear it to a lot of like more dressy events. I really like the way the sneaker looks. But now let's move into some more hypey stuff that isn't exactly Nike, New Balance, or Adidas. And the first shoe in that segment of my collection are the Bapesta Stadium Goods. This is a super cool collaboration between Stadium Goods and Bapesta, or I guess Bape. This shoe kind of looks like an Air Force One. There's also the Skatestas, which I think are like a different take on the Dunks. But it's a really cool looking sneaker. It's my first pair of Bapestas. Next up, we've got two different colorways of the No Two Way sneaker. This shoe was designed by Rockwell Princely and YouTuber Cal Lux. It's a super, super clean sneaker. They started their own brand, No Two Ways, and this colorway, I believe, is completely sold out, but this white colorway, I think, is their more GR version of the shoe, and I think it might still be available, but a huge thank you to them for sending these shoes my way. Love the way that they look, and uh, congrats to their brand. They're killing it. After that, we've got a shoe from a pretty well-established designer, John Geiger. This is his Martell collaboration. I actually did some sponsored content for Martell, and they sent me this pair of sneakers, which I really appreciate. Next up, I've got two different colorways of Masha's signature sneaker, the Centralia, or I guess maybe this is a Centralia colorway and this is the gouache colorway, but super, super clean sneaker. I love the way this shoe looks. The Centralia is actually one of my most worn sneakers of 2020, when did this shoe come out? Whatever year this shoe came out, I wore this sneaker a bunch. So a uh, huge shout out to Mosh for making an incredibly comfortable and great looking sneaker. Continuing on, I've got the A Few Saucony collaboration that they sent over. This outsole is actually glow in the dark, which is super cool. I didn't even know that until I was driving home one day from something and my shoes were glowing and I was like, what the hell is going on here? Turns out they had glow in the dark soles, so <laughs> very, very cool sneaker. Next is a really cool sneaker, which I actually forgot about, and that's this sample pair of Puma MCM sneakers. This shoe is super cool. You've got the sample tag in the inside. It's got MCM leather on the sides. A huge shout out to Puma and MCM for sending this my way. I really appreciate it. This shoe is wild. Moving into Vans, I've got the Headley and Bennett Skate Highs. This is a collaboration with Headley and Bennett. It's got this insane multicolor outsole, which I love. Great looking pair of sneakers. If you're looking for a white pair of Vans, Definitely can recommend this one. After that, we've got a classic, and that is the black and white old schools. One of my favorite pairs of Vans. I think this is probably my favorite pair of Vans, and then the Authentics, and then probably the Eras. But I love the way this sneaker looks. It's incredible. I worked at Vans for like four years in high school. Actually, almost my entire time in high school. I love Vans as a brand. I think they do incredible work and make great quality sneakers. However, at this point, I only have two pairs of Vans in my collection. So that's a little embarrassing after I talk them up, but great pair of sneakers, super easy to wear. Moving into some Reeboks, we've got the Reebok Answer 4s, one of Allen Iverson's most popular sneakers. This is the step over colorway, the colorway that he stepped over Tyron Lewin, which is one of the most iconic sports moments and iconic Sixers moments. Love this sneaker. I wear this to a lot of Sixers games. Next, we've got the Reebok Question Mids in the two-way or back and forth colorway. I don't remember exactly what the name of this colorway is, but the right shoe comes with the blue toe and the left shoe comes with the red toe. Allen Iverson is the GOAT, so uh, love this sneaker. And as a Sixers fan, you know I had to have a pair of these. Sticking with the Sixers theme, I've got a pair of customized Under Armors, customized to be the Joel Embiid Under Armors. They actually have real jersey material on the tongue. And then of course, you've got the process painted on the side, which I love. Probably never gonna wear these because these are more of an art piece. Currently, I've got two different special edition pairs of Timberlands. I have a bunch of the regular Tims, the Butters, but uh, I'm not gonna show you guys those because you've seen those a million times. But these are the staple collaboration with Timberlands. I love these shoes. I wear them all the time, especially when it's snowing. And then I've also got the Beeline Tims. Now this is an older Tims model. I don't remember the name of this pair. I just haven't had a chance to wear it yet. Moving into Croc territory, which is an uncharted territory for a lot of sneaker collectors. We've got the KFC collaboration with Crocs. This shoe has a drumstick as a gibbet on the toe of each shoe. The drumstick actually is scented like chicken. It doesn't really smell like chicken. It smells more like cornflakes. But I love how ridiculous this shoe is. I keep it in the display case that they sent it to me in. 
It's a nuts pair of shoes and it's probably one of the weirdest pairs in my entire collection, so it's never gonna leave. And then I've got one of my favorite releases of 2021 and that's the Salehi Benbury Polex Crocs. So this shoe actually made my top 10 list, both on the top 10 collaborations and also just the top 10 sneakers of 2021. It's such an insane looking shoe. I love the concept behind it, how this is Salehi Benbury's fingerprint. Super, super cool. And uh, I'm just a big Salehi fan. Everything he does just is awesome so far. So he hasn't dropped the ball yet. So uh, a cheer for him, hope he does well. And uh, this shoe is just another example of how insane of a designer he is. So I think that's every pair of sneakers that I have that isn't from like Nike and Jordan brand or Adidas and New Balance, I think. I might add some in a little bit later. You guys might not know because I would have thrown them in and just not told you that I had them in. But why don't we move right into the first of the uh, the largest sections of my sneaker collection and that's Adidas. So let's start things off with this pair of Ultra Boost, which I think are getting blown out on the camera. This is the Triple White Ultra Boost 1.0, the second release. One of my most worn sneakers in my collection and somehow it's still very, very clean. I guess it's shout out to Rejuvenator for that. Sticking with Ultra Boost, we've got the Ultra Boost 21 in the triple black colorway. The shoe is very comfortable on foot. It's also pretty similar to the Ultra Boost 21, so if you have that shoe, you probably don't need this one, but definitely a sneaker worth checking out. After that, we've got the Mahomes signature shoe. I don't remember exactly what this shoe is called, but it's Patrick Mahomes' signature. Cool sneaker, but he's sort of a rival of Lamar Jackson, so while I think he's a great football player and while I like this shoe, um, I can't wear it that often because Lamar is the truth. So, putting this one down. After that is a pair of recycled or made to be recycled Adidas Terex. This shoe is made out of materials that apparently are supposed to be able to be easily recycled once the shoe's lifespan is up. As you can tell by the tags, I haven't worn this shoe yet, but I really love the concept and I'm excited to try it out. Next up is a pair of Adidas Ultra 4Ds. These are the Ama Manier collaboration. This was actually sent to me by Ama Manier, so huge thank you to them for this. And I love the 3D printed midsole. I think that's so sick. Another 3D printed shoe that I have is actually one of the very first 3D printed sneakers to ever hit the market, and that's the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. So I grabbed this shoe back in 2018 and at the time the shoe was reselling for like a thousand dollars now I think it's dropped in price to like maybe 200 or 300 It's crazy how much the price has fallen on this shoe But still one of my favorite sneakers in my collection one of the first 3d printed shoes and as an industrial designer I love 3d printing so this is one of those shoes It's always been like a really cool thing for me next up We've got the ubic friends and family pair of the adidas boost you wear twos really clean looking sneaker I've worn it once to a ubic event I just don't love wearing friends and family stuff because I want to keep it as nice as possible I know that's kind of a hype beast thing to say but let's be honest for sentimental stuff like this, I like keeping it in great condition. So I'm excited about this shoe. I love having it in my collection. Maybe one day I'll throw it on again. Speaking of friends and family, last year Adidas sent over this friends and family pair of Adidas NMD S1s. This is the latest iteration of the Adidas NMD. It's almost a completely new take on the sneaker and the friends and family colorway, the sort of light blue tealish colorway is super, super fire. Next we've got the Home Alone Adidas Forum Lows, a super clean sneaker. And even without the Home Alone theming, I think the colorway is super clean. I've yet to wear these. I'm not, don't get mad at me for this, but I'm not like the biggest Home Alone fan. So, uh, I don't know. I just like the colorway of this shoe. But it is what it is. Super clean sneaker regardless, and uh, I'm excited to try this shoe out. The next pair of forums that I have is another friends and family release. This is actually an exclusive friends and family release. There's only 333 pairs of these. I've got pair 230. This is the Bodega Adidas Forum collaboration that, again, only released as a friends and family. This is probably one of my favorite sneakers in my collection. Every collaboration that they drop is fire. I mean, every collaboration. So, the fact that they're showing me love like this and sending me a crazy fire collaboration. A friends and family pair is super cool, so thank you Bodega for this. Next up, we've got a couple sample pairs of the Adidas Pharrell Human Race NMDs. Adidas has sent me a lot of pairs of Pharrell Human Race NMDs over the last year or so. A lot of them are at the Apothecary office because we use them for photo shoots. But these are the three that I've kept in my own personal collection. This one being the craziest of the bunch. This is by far the most limited pair. I don't remember exactly what the colorway of this one is. You've got this crazy quilted upper with this like chenille sort of text on the top, which is awesome. You've also got the NERD pair, which I'm surprised that this pair didn't do as well as I thought it was going to because it's an NERD collaboration. Usually that stuff goes crazy, but I absolutely love this colorway. I think cream Pharrell's are fire. And then the other pair that I have, at least in this collection at my house, are the, uh, I don't remember what these ones are called, but I think this is my favorite Pharrell colorway that I've ever seen. It's sort of like tannish gray upper with this sort of semi-translucent yellowish midfoot cage and then you've got the hit of red on the front. Super, super clean look. And of course, because these are all samples, they all have sample tags and I don't have the heart to take off the sample tags, so 
But now let's get into the Yeezys, a selection of sneakers that I used to have a bunch of, and then slowly over the last like year and a half, I've cut it down to maybe like one, two, three, four, five, six, six different pairs, which is kind of crazy. But to start things off, we've got the Yeezy Slide Ochres, a very recent pickup. This is a pair of shoes that I never thought that I would want, and then I got my wife a pair for Christmas, and I tried them on, and I was like, yes, they're too small, but dang, they're comfortable. So I had to grab a pair for myself. I grabbed the Ochres because they were the cheapest, and uh, I love them. I really love this pair of shoes a lot. In fact, I think we're buying a lot more slides because of this. Sticking with foam style Yeezys, we've got the Yeezy Foam Runners in the uh, MXT Gray something. I forget what the name of this colorway is, but it's fire. It comes in sort of like a brown with a darker brown. You've got blues and pinks. It's a super weird colorway, and it's not the easiest thing to match with, but I just don't even try and match it. I just wear it with whatever, and then just kind of deal with it. <laughs> it's a great looking sneaker. I love it, and it's insanely comfortable. Then of course we've got the OG Foam Runners, the Ararat colorway. I bought this for I think $300 right when they came out and now the prices for these are insane. One of my favorite sneakers in my entire collection. I love the way this shoe looks. It's crazy, it's out there, but it's probably also one of the most comfortable shoes in my collection. I can't say enough good things about this shoe. Absolutely love these. Next up, we've got the Yeezy 500s. This is my only pair. I think this is the Salt colorway. I don't remember all the colorways for these Yeezys. There's just so many Yeezys now. But uh, yeah, this is one of the shoes I think I'm gonna be selling. It is very clean. I cleaned it up with Rejuvenator and uh, a great shoe. I just don't wear it. Next, we've got the Yeezy 350 V2 Compacts, a shoe that I think is kind of ugly, but it's incredibly comfortable. Now, this is one of those shoes that I'm kind of torn on because after wearing it for about a week, I really do love this shoe, but um, I just don't see myself wearing it that often. It's one of the most comfortable Yeezys ever, so there's that. But at the same time, I just don't love the way that it looks. So this might be another shoe that I might be getting rid of. Again, cutting down my Yeezy collection, but it's a great sneaker nonetheless. After that, we've got the Reflective 350 V2 Belugas, one of the best Yeezy colorways I think ever. The Belugas are the OG 350 V2s, and this Reflective colorway looks just like the originals. In fact, you can barely see any of the Reflective details, so it's almost just like a standard pair of Belugas. Really love this shoe. I wish I had gone up half a size, but it is what it is. Uh, great sneaker and probably the only pair of 350s that I'll keep in my collection. In fact, as of right now, it is the only pair of 350s other than the compacts. And then my final pair of Yeezys are the Yeezy 700 Wave Runners. By far my favorite Adidas Yeezy ever made. I've actually had this shoe since it first released. In fact, I pre-ordered this shoe from Yeezy Supply back in 2017, I think it's when the shoe dropped. In fact, this was one of my most viewed videos on my channel because my channel was still pretty new at that point. I absolutely love this shoe. I love the way it looks. At the time, this was one of the craziest looking Yeezys. Now, obviously, things have gotten a little bit crazier than this, but genuinely just one of the most comfortable, one of the best looking, and one of the most timeless, I would even say, pair of Yeezys of all time. But now let's get into one of my favorite brands of the moment, and that's New Balance. And the first shoe in my New Balance collection are the BB9000s, a retro-inspired basketball sneaker that honestly didn't take off as much as I thought it was going to. I thought this shoe was gonna fly off shelves, but for some reason, they're sitting everywhere. It's a fire sneaker, and I think if you don't have a pair of these, it's definitely worth the pickup. After that, we've got another pair of New Balance basketball shoes. This is the Omnis, and this is probably my favorite colorway of the Omnis. In my opinion, this is one of the best, if not the best looking performance basketball shoe to release over the last couple years. There's something about its sleek aesthetic with all these little claw details that I really dig, and in this colorway, man, it's fire. Then finishing off my New Balance basketball sneakers, we've got the New Balance Basketball Kawhi Signature. This is a shoe that was designed by the same person who designed the last basketball shoe I just talked about, and uh, he's done an incredible job on this shoe. This colorway is a two-way colorway. I don't love this colorway just because it's uh, inspired by the time that Kawhi Leonard made the shot, um, knocking the Sixers out of the playoffs, so that kind of sucks, but the shoe itself is fire. Now getting into more lifestyle stuff, we've got the New Balance 990 V5. This is the Black History Month colorway, and this is probably my most worn shoe of the last like year and a half two years. This shoe I've worn through, I mean, pretty much every situation. It's just a great shoe to throw on. It's insanely comfortable. The colorway looks awesome. Everything about the 990 V5 is great, and I absolutely love this sneaker. And that's why I have a second pair of 990 V5s, this time in the classic gray colorway. This is another shoe that's quickly becoming one of my most worn sneakers of the year. Um, as you can see, it's pretty beat just because I wear it all the time. But a super easy shoe to throw on, and in this gray colorway, it goes with pretty much anything. Another 990 that I really love but have yet to wear is the New Balance 990 V3s. This is the special edition re-release of this shoe. It comes in the classic gray colorway, and I think the 990 V3, personally, is my favorite version of the 990s. I'm super excited about the 990 V6s that are supposed to release sometime this year. I'm not sure exactly when, but this shoe is fire, and I can't wait to throw this on. I just need to lace it up and start doing it, because this shoe is awesome. Then moving into the collaborations, we've got the New Balance Bodega X Racers. This is a super clean sneaker. This is a great hiking shoe. I love the way it looks, and I've honestly worn this for pretty much every hike that I've done in the last year and a half. I haven't done too many this year. Obviously, it's 
since the beginning of the year, so I haven't done any in 2022. <laughs> but uh, really, this is one of my go-tos for outdoor hiking, and uh, it's really just a great looking collab. I think Bodega absolutely knocked it out of the park with this guy. Sticking with Bodega collabs, we've got the Bodega 997S's. This is the No Days Off colorway, or the um, Good Days Are Coming, or Bad Days, No Bad Days. I don't remember exactly what the name of this colorway is, but this is the latest 997 collaboration that they had done. I think it's also the last 997 collab that they did. Another classic Bodega New Balance collaboration are these guys, the 997S No Bad Days. This shoe is incredible. This was my first real like New Balance collaboration that I just became fully obsessed with. I've worn this shoe so much and somehow it's still in pretty decent condition, which I'm happy about. I do clean it up with Rejuvenator. In fact, when I visited Rejuvenator's offices last time in Phoenix, this is what I was wearing the whole trip. So one of my favorite shoes in my collection. And then rounding off the Bodega New Balance collaborations that I've got, we've got the Bodega New Balance 990 V3s. This shoe is incredible. Like I said, the 990 V3s are my favorite New Balance 990s. This is one of those colorways that's very simple, very subtle, but it works and you can wear it with pretty much anything. It's such a timeless look and the 990 V3s are so crazy comfortable. This is definitely a go-to. Moving into ALD, we've got the ALD New Balance 827. This is the first ALD collab that I picked up with New Balance. This shoe is incredible. Out of the three colorways that dropped in this collection, I think the yellow one was my favorite. Um, now Teddy Santis, the founder of ALD, I think is the creative director at New Balance. So a huge shout out to him for creating something so amazing that New Balance hired him. Sticking with ALD, I've got three different colorways of the ALD New Balance 5 50s. This one's by far my favorite. This is the classic green colorway or the natural green colorway. I don't remember the name of the colorway. I just know it's the yellow and green one. I think it's fire. I've also got the blue and red one. Again, I don't know the exact name of this shoe. And then I've got the original one from the collaboration or one of the original ones from the collaboration, this green and white one. ALD actually revived the 550 silhouette and made it one of my favorite silhouettes of the last couple years. Obviously, the silhouette's from the 80s, but bringing it back in the 2020s was a really great call because this style of shoe is really coming back and the 550s have quickly become one of my most worn sneakers of the year. I know I say that about a lot of the New Balances in my collection, but genuinely, I wear New Balances probably five days out of the week. I love New Balances. So moving on to the next collaborator, we've got Saleh Hebembury with his very first New Balance 2002R colorway. This orange, yellow, and blue colorway is absolutely insane. I think this is probably my second favorite collaboration that he's done with New Balance. Obviously, I'm a huge Saleh Hebembury fan, but this shoe is fire. Of course, I've got his second 2002 R colorway, the Water Be The Guide colorway that comes in like this teal and almost like skin tone color. And I love the fact that Soleil, he actually put his fingerprint on the back of the shoe. That's a super cool way of signing the sneaker. I think that's awesome. And then the final Soleil, he Bembry New Balance sneaker that I have that I've talked about a bunch this year is the New Balance Soleil, he 574s. Now this shoe is crazy because this shoe has a whistle on the back. I'll blow it for you guys very quietly over here just because every time I blow it in a video, like it blows out the mic. I love how chunky it is. I love the insanely hairy suede. I think Salehi Bembry is just an insane designer as it is. And the shoes that he's done with New Balance are all pretty incredible. And I think my favorite is the Yurts. Then we've got the orange and blue boys, and then we've got the blue and green boys, and they're all great. And then the final pair of New Balances in my collection, and probably my favorite pair, are the New Balance 992 Joe Fresh Goods Anatomy of a Heart. So this collab dropped in 2020 during All-Star Weekend. I was in Chicago for that event. I was lucky enough to have New Balance actually send me this shoe. And since wearing the 992s, I know I'm kind of late to the trend on that one, but the 992s are some of the most incredible sneakers I've ever worn. They're insanely comfortable. The upper is so well padded, and this colorway in general, Joe Fresh Goods absolutely knocked out of the park. This shoe looks insane. The fact that it's inspired by the anatomy of a heart, the inside of a heart, and you can see all the little ventricles in there just by changing the color on the materials makes this shoe one of the most interesting shoes I own, and I just love red and black. So red and black on a sneaker is always a win for me. Next up, let's move into Nike. And my Nike collection is actually a lot smaller than it was last year. I really did get rid of a lot of Nike sneakers. And actually, come to think of it, there's some other sneakers over at the Apothecary office too, which I forgot to grab, but it is what it is. You probably won't miss any of them. First shoe in the collection is the Nike Pegasus 37, I think. Not the 38. Pretty sure this is a 37, but I've really lost track at this point. This is an incredibly comfortable sneaker. The upper is pretty soft. The React and the Air Zoom unit in the forefoot make this shoe even softer underfoot. Then we get to the most comfortable shoe in the entire collection, and that is the Nike React Infinity Runs, or Infinity Run Reacts. I don't remember exactly what the name of this shoe is. It's ugly, but it's super soft underfoot. You've got Zoom X, which feels amazing, and that's one of the reasons why it's one of my most worn sneakers of the year. After that, we get into some of the more hypey stuff, and this first shoe is the Supreme Lunar Flyknit 1. This shoe is insane. 
insane. I remember when this shoe first released, there was no way in hell I was gonna be able to get a pair, but this pair was actually gifted to me by DJ Big Boy Chang when I went to the Philippines. But I absolutely love this sneaker and it's never gonna leave my collection. After that, we've got another very well-known sneaker and this is the Sean Watherspoon Air Max 197s. This shoe is probably one of the most popular Air Maxes of all time. It's crazy to say that, but it is. And even though Sean was already on the map because of his store, this shoe just catapulted him into sneaker stardom. It was crazy when this happened, but continuing on, we've got the off-white Air Force Ones in the Volt colorway. This is a bright neon green shoe, if you couldn't already tell. Um, I didn't love this shoe at first, but then I got my wife a pair in the Philippines, and uh, I realized how good they looked on her, and then I wanted a pair for myself so we could match. So now I have a pair, and I actually wear it a bunch. In fact, I wear it more than she does. After that, we've got another Virgil piece. Rest in peace, Virgil Abloh, one of the greatest footwear designers to ever do it. This is from the original 10 collection. This is the original off-white Presto. I love this shoe. I've worn this shoe so, so much. Really one of my favorite off-white sneakers ever made. And obviously the Presto is already a very comfortable shoe and a good looking shoe. So just adding that Virgil touch to it makes this shoe like one of my favorite sneakers in my entire collection. I would go as far as to say that this genuinely is one of my favorites. Next up, we've got the Kobe 6 Grinches from 2020. This shoe re-released obviously in 2020, the year that Kobe Bryant passed away. Um, I'm very lucky to have this shoe. I never had the original Grinches and I'm so happy to be able to have a pair in my collection now. This is such a classic Nike basketball shoe. I wish Nike would bring back their Christmas sneakers. Those were always bangers. This shoe is so awesome and this will never be leaving my collection. After that, we've got the Nike KD6 in the Ant Pearl colorway. This is obviously the uh, the cancer awareness colorway. He does this colorway every year for his Aunt Pearl who passed away years ago from cancer. Um, this shoe means a lot to me, obviously, because I lost my mother to cancer. So this is kind of one of those shoes that just reminds me of her, even though she never got to see it. Super cool sneaker and one that uh, I probably will never get rid of. I know I've said that a lot about a lot of the sneakers in my collection, at least in the Nike basketball section, but that's the reason they're still in my collection because each one of these shoes have a story behind it. But moving into dunks, let's start things off with the Bodega Nike Dunk High collaboration. This shoe is absolutely insane. One of those insane looking dunk collabs that I really wish they did more of. The thing that I always loved about Nike Dunks was how people who collaborated on these shoes were never afraid to do something insane. And Bodega did that on this shoe. A dunk that I find myself wearing all the time are the Syracuse Nike Dunk Lows, a very, very clean colorway. I'm not a huge fan of orange sneakers. Obviously, I have the, uh, the Shadow Backboard Air Jordan 1s, but that's really the only pair of orange shoes that I have other than the Salehi Bemberies. I think that's pretty much it. But even though orange isn't one of my favorite colorways, this shoe is super fun to wear. It pops, it's out there, and it's obviously a classic Nike Dunk, so definitely a shoe that I enjoy rocking on a very regular basis. Another simple Nike Dunk colorway is the UNC Nike Dunk Lows, a great sneaker. I think I got this from Stadium Goods. I just love the colorway, and again, it's just super easy to throw on with anything. So this is one of those shoes that just kind of sits by my front door because I can just throw it on. A really interesting pair of Nike Dunks are these guys right here. These are the Nick For Real Nike Dunks. This is actually a sneaker collaboration and custom piece, which I think they made a couple different pairs of these customs. This shoe is absolutely insane looking. They used incredible materials on it. You've got this mismatching look. You've got red suede and white tumbled leather, and then of course, neon green laces. But yeah, definitely a piece that you don't see every day, and I really love having this sneaker in my collection, and obviously, I wear it on a semi-regular basis. Next up, we've got a classic with the Nike Tiffany Dunk Highs. Now, obviously, this shoe is not as sought after as the Nike Tiffany Dunk Lows, but uh, at the end of the day, this is the closest thing I can get to that shoe, and I actually did grab this shoe originally when it released back in 2013, 2014. Um, I ended up selling that pair because it wasn't my size, but it was nice to be able to get this shoe back, uh, I think last year or the year before. The one downside with this shoe is that these older Nike Dunks have very, very stiff leather, so the shoe actually does hurt to wear, but uh, I do throw it on now and then, and it's uh, just a classic Nike Dunk colorway. Speaking of Nike Dunks that hurt to wear, we've got the Nike SB Dunk Low Supreme Elephant Prince that released back in 2012 or 2011, I don't remember exactly when these dropped, but uh, this shoe is another one of those Nike Dunks with that really Really stiff leather. Um, I think I grabbed this shoe at SneakerCon DC a couple years back. This, in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of other people's opinions, is one of the most classic Supreme collaborations of all time. This shoe is one of those like Supreme Grails for Supreme collectors out there. I love this shoe. I was lucky to get it for a good price, and uh, I'm really happy to have it. And I think with that, we're actually to the last Nike sneaker that is not an Air Jordan. Eesh, I just dropped it. We'll see in a second why I made that face. This shoe is the Nike Air Yeezy 1 Zens. This is the very first Nike Yeezy sneaker to ever release. It's worth about five to $6,000 and I just dropped it on a pair of scissors. So um, hopefully I didn't damage it. 
Ugh, okay, this shoe is absolutely fire. This shoe is definitely a grail of mine. It was so exciting to be able to grab this shoe earlier this year, or I guess now last year. Really, really an insane sneaker. It's DS, it's got a glow-in-the-dark outsole. I cannot believe I have these. And uh, because I spent so much money on these stupid shoes, I probably will never wear them. But they're fire. I love having them regardless. I'm a big Kanye fan, and this being his very first Nike collaboration is crazy to have. So, very excited about this shoe. And another shoe that will probably never leave my collection, unless, you know, my house goes into foreclosure or something like that. But until then, we've got this guy to have on display. But moving into Jordan's, the last category in this video, because this is the brand that got me into sneaker collecting. The first shoe, and I guess the way we'll do this is kind of count down from the newest Jordans to the oldest Jordan models, at least. Um, the first shoe is going to be this guy, the Air Jordan 34, I believe, or the 35. I don't remember. I've lost track at this point. This is a really great sneaker. It's great for basketball. It looks really cool. I love the cutout in the center, and uh, I love the direction that Jordan Brand is taking their performance line I think that they've been killing it recently so shout out to Jordan brand for that next up we've got another shoe that I got from a Jordan brand event this is the Air Jordan 32 low this is the Gatorade collaboration actually I didn't get this from an event it came in this crazy Michael Jordan box which I still have right back there this shoe is really cool looking I think the 32 is one of the best looking performance basketball or recent performance basketball Jordan models and I haven't worn this one yet so maybe one day I'll throw this on then moving down into the Air Jordan 11s we've got the wind like 96s I think is what these are this is actually an Air Jordan um, sample because this is actually a shoe that they gave to me at an event and I believe they usually give out like samples or promo samples I think is what they're actually called unfortunately this shoe is a little bit harder to wear with a lot of the things that I wear just because it is so bright um, but I do really like it it's one of my favorite Air Jordan 11s but you'll see the next couple Jordan 11s that I have in the collection I think I like even more just because they're classics but definitely a very cool new colorway after that we've got the Air Jordan 11 Concords a classic this is the most recent release of the shoe this is one of those shoes that I wear on a very regular basis because of how easy it is to rock. I love the Jordan 11 silhouette and the Concord is genuinely one of the best Jordan 11s. Then we've got my favorite Air Jordan 11 of all time, the Air Jordan 11 bread. I love this shoe. I think it's the best Air Jordan 11 ever. The upper of the shoe obviously comes in black accented by this beautiful red outsole. Really just the best Jordan 11. I, I don't know why anyone would think any other Jordan 11 is better. I understand that there's like history behind the other ones too. You got the Space Jams, you got the Concords, but this one man this is just it for me. Then moving on to the Air Jordan 10s, we've got the Air Jordan 10 Soulflies. This is actually the only pair of 10s in my collection at the moment. This shoe looks a lot like the Linen 10s, which are my favorite 10s for some reason. I don't know why, I just love that shoe. But the material quality on these Soulflies is so much better than the Linen 10, so I definitely prefer this shoe. And uh, I got this shoe for retail. After that, we've got the Air Jordan 6 Gatorades. These came alongside the Air Jordan 32 Gatorades that I just showed you guys. These came in that crazy box set. Very cool looking pair of sneakers. It reminds me a lot of the Carmines, except obviously in orange. I definitely prefer the Carmines, but for some reason I don't have a pair of the Carmines. Then moving into Air Jordan 5s, so we've got the Air Jordan 5 Bel Air, probably one of my favorite Air Jordan 5s of all time. This is a shoe that I actually camped out for at Ubic in uh, Center City, Philadelphia back in 2013. I was one person behind the person in line who got this shoe, so I never got it, and uh, that was a huge bummer for me. So um, finally being able to grab this shoe in like 2019 or 2020, whenever I grabbed it, was definitely a huge up for me, and uh, I love this sneaker. I really, really do. I don't wear it that much, because it's kind of crazy, but um, definitely a Philly classic. After that, we've got another insanely popular Air Jordan 5, the Off-White Air Jordan 5, the original colorway. I like the newer colorway as well. I had that colorway in my collection, but this one is so much easier to wear. It doesn't get dirty that easily, and I think Virgil just did his thing on this shoe. I think he absolutely knocked it out of the park. It's also insanely comfortable for some reason. They got rid of a lot of the padding on the upper of the shoe, which makes it even more comfortable. You do have to go half size down, but definitely one of the most comfortable fives, if not the most comfortable pair of fives in my entire collection. So love this shoe. After that, we've got another promo sample, the promo sample of the Dornbecker Air Jordan 5s. I actually bought this on eBay a little while ago. I'd actually owned this shoe a couple years ago, but I ended up selling it. And now having a promo sample version of the shoe is even cooler. And uh, I just love this sneaker. I wish I had the black light for it, but super awesome pair of shoes, definitely an amazing story behind this sneaker, and uh, a shoe that I need to start throwing on and rocking. I think this pair is like almost DS, it's crazy. And then rounding off the Air Jordan 5s, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Grail in my collection, and that's the Tokyo 5s. I actually grabbed these at ComplexCon with Hess Kicks. I actually got these for free because I won a raffle for these, which was nuts. A really great story behind that shoe. If you haven't checked out the vlog, you definitely should. I think there's also a vlog on Hess Kicks channel about this shoe because he also has a pair of Tokyo 5s. Really an insane, insane sneaker. I don't wear this shoe much, obviously because of um, 
how valuable it is. I'm afraid to ruin it, but uh, really a shoe that I love to throw on whenever I can, and it's definitely an eye-catching sneaker. Then moving into the Jordan 4s, we've got the Air Jordan 4 White Cement. This is a shoe that, if I remember correctly, is one of Yoanti's favorite sneakers. I was a big fan of Yoanti back when he was still posting videos. Huge shout out to Yoanti if you're watching this. Probably not, but if you are, what's up? And then the final pair of Air Jordan 4s in my collection, which I thought that I had more, but apparently I don't is the Fire Red Air Jordan 4s. This is the most recent release of the shoe, an incredibly iconic sneaker and one that I just love having in my collection. I think I am probably gonna start buying all the original colorways of Air Jordan sneakers like I was planning to last year, but an incredibly cool sneaker and one that I'm really proud to have. Now getting into Air Jordan 3s, we've got the Air Jordan 3 Katrinas, or Hall of Fames, I think is what they actually ended up naming the GR version of the shoe. This is an incredibly clean sneaker, it comes with the white upper and that red accent on the heel, which just makes it pop. Next is a classic with the Black Cement 3s, my favorite Air Jordan 3 of all time. You can't really get much more classic than the Black Cement 3s, maybe the White Cement 3s, I don't know, but the Black Cement 3s are definitely my favorite. I was so excited when this shoe re-released back in 2018, I had to grab this pair, I paid resale for it early, just to get you guys the earlier review, and I've worn it a bunch ever since. And then a shoe that I'm sure you're very familiar with at this point, the Amamanier Air Jordan 3s. This was a shoe that I crowned sneaker of the year and so did a lot of other people. This shoe was actually a women's only release but it came in larger women's sizes so men like myself could wear them. I have size 9 feet so it's pretty easy to get my feet into a pair of these guys. I think these did actually go up to a size 13 in men's so a lot of guys could wear this shoe but honestly the material quality on this shoe, the colorway, everything about this shoe just made this one of the best Air Jordan 3s I think of the last decade. So even though this shoe isn't an OG colorway, it definitely deserves its place in the Air Jordan 3 Hall of Fame. Haha, <laughs> puns. I don't know if you guys caught that, but. Next up is the only Air Jordan 2 in my collection. Currently, obviously it looks like I'm an Air Jordan 2 hype beast because of this Virgil collaboration, but honestly, I just really like this shoe. But I do have to say that it was the concept behind this shoe that really sold me on it. The fact that this shoe was designed to look like it was a game-worn pair of sneakers that came out of Nike's vault. It's got the cracked midsole and Michael Jordan signature on it. It's such a cool concept. But now we move into my favorite category of sneakers, and that's the Air Jordan 1s, and I have a lot of Air Jordan 1s. And the first shoe I'm gonna show you guys are the Edison Chen Air Jordan 1 mids. Actually, my only pair of mids in my collection. I'm not the biggest fan of mids, and I know people say that you're kind of a snob if you're not, but at the end of the day, honestly, mids are like kind of a discount high and a not as cool low. Jordan Brand definitely made a push to make the mids cool back in 2019, and this is probably one of the best mids that I've ever released. This shoe is an insane collaboration. The upper is tearaway, and you see this golden black shoe underneath. It's a great sneaker collaboration, and my favorite part is the fact that the Nike swoosh sort of fades into nothingness on the heel. I love that. Speaking of lows, I did just pick up the Air Jordan 1 Low Shattered Backboards, or Air Jordan 1 Low Starfish is what they're called. This shoe is a very clean looking sneaker. I'm not the biggest fan of Air Jordan 1 Lows. I do have another pair in the collection, which you guys know about. Super clean sneaker that I sometimes wear instead of my dunks because it's a very similar silhouette. Um, I was genuinely surprised by this shoe. I didn't think I was going to like it. I didn't think the material quality would be as good as it is. Usually lows don't have the best material quality, but this one's solid and I'm happy that I have it. Then getting into a sneaker collaboration that I think has become an instant classic and will probably jump up in value over the next couple months, the Ama Manier Air Jordan 1s. This shoe is super, super clean. Ama Manier has been killing it recently with their collaborations. I think James Whitner knocked it out of the park and uh, I'm excited to wear it more often. I haven't actually worn this one in public yet. I've only worn it for the video, so plan to wear this very soon. Next up is another shoe that I think will become a classic from 2021, and that is the Air Jordan 1 University Blues. This shoe is sort of styled in the Chicago color blocking, and uh, it comes with this really nice Nubuck upper, and the colorway is very, very clean. And as I'm sure you know, the hype behind this shoe is already insane, so I'm glad I grabbed this shoe when I did. I got it for a good price. And uh, I definitely should wear this soon, because I haven't yet. I wore it for the review and that was it. That's actually the case for a lot of my recent pickups. I wore them for the review and then haven't worn them since. I will get to wearing them soon, but uh, it just hasn't happened yet. Speaking of shoes that I've only worn very lightly, we've got the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Lowe's. This, in my opinion, is the best Travis Scott collaboration of 2021. It's an awesome looking sneaker. I'm a big Fragment fan and I love the Fragment Air Jordan 1s. So the reason I love this shoe so much is because of the Fragment color blocking on the shoe. The Travis Scott detailing is fine. I think the backwards cream Nike swoosh is cool, but for me the thing that really drew me to the shoe was the Fragment colorway, the Fragment branding, and I just wish I had a pair of Fragment highs, but this one will have to do. And I actually really like the fact that it's a low top because you can show off your apothecary socks with it. In fact, we use this for the basic shoot, so awesome pair of sneakers. Then continuing on with Travis, we've got one of the original Travis Scott releases with the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s in this mocha colorway. Obviously, we've had some other Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s released since, but I think this one is my second favorite after the lows. That colorway just did it for me. This shoe is pretty clean. I like the materials. I like the backwards Nike swoosh. I've worn it a good amount of times, and uh, I have yet to store anything in the stash pocket. Not that I ever will, but it's nice to know that I have the option 
if I ever need to um, smuggle anything, which I've never done, so I doubt that I'm gonna be using it, but nice to know I got the option. <laughs> Continuing on, we get into some of the more classic Air Jordan 1 colorways. We've got the Air Jordan 1 Shadows. This is the 2018 pair. One of my most worn Air Jordan 1 colorways because it's so easy to rock with a lot of different outfits. Unfortunately, it is getting a little bit of that sparkliness going on, which is weird because I don't have it like in paper or anything, so it must be the leather or the finish that they put in the leather, but super awesome shoe that I love to rock. Obviously, because I have the Shadows, I have to have a pair of the Royals, and you guys know what will be coming next after the Royals, but uh, a really, really clean shoe. I love the blue on this sneaker. Again, one of my most worn Jordans. In fact, the big three, the Shadows, the Royals, and the shoe that's coming up, are uh, some of my favorite Jordan ones ever made and some of my most worn Jordans for obvious reasons. And then, of course, we've got the Bread Air Jordan ones, my favorite sneaker of all time. This shoe is so, so sick. This is the 2016 pair. Obviously, I've worn this pair a bunch. I do still have a pair on ice, which uh, did get very sparkly over the last couple months, but I did clean it up. Seriously, I don't have enough good things to say about this sneaker. This is like the perfect shoe, in my opinion. The Bread ones are my favorite shoe. I mean, they're not at the end of the video because I have some sneakers that are worth more and I guess are also more sentimentally uh, valuable to me. But if we're just looking at a shoe from a purely silhouette and colorway standpoint, this guy wins it for me every single time. Speaking of bread Jordan 1s, we've got the patent bread Jordan 1s that just released. I reviewed this pair back in like, was it November or October? I don't remember. I grabbed this pair from Goat Instant Ship. I've only worn it once. Super clean sneaker, but obviously it doesn't hold a candle to the originals. Patent leather is just not my favorite material, so for that reason, it's uh, always gonna be a second to the OGs. Another classic Jordan 1 colorway are the Black Toes. This is a 2016 pair of Black Toes. I got this on the Sneakers app somehow. Super stoked on this shoe. Um, I've only worn it like once or twice. But uh, it's a shoe that I definitely should wear more because it's such a great looking colorway. I just usually prefer to wear the Breads or the Chicago's. But this one is still an OG colorway. It's still an extremely clean shoe. And uh, I really should wear it more. I don't know why I don't. I want to make a point to wear the shoe more often. But now we're starting to get into some heavy hitters. And the first heavy hitter is the Shattered Backboard Air Jordan 1s. Not that the Bread ones aren't heavy hitters, but this one is like on another level. These Shattered Backboards are crazy. This is, I believe, the first Jordan that I bought on GOAT or the first shoe that I bought on GOAT. Either of these are the shoe that's coming up. But um, I grabbed these for like 300 bucks, which is crazy. Unfortunately, though, this is a size 8.5, so I kind of have to squeeze into this shoe. But the reason for that is because a size 9 is like $50 more the time and I didn't want to spend it. I was still working full-time as a designer and I didn't have the money to grab sneakers the way that I do now. Not that I have the money now, but now it's my job so they're tax right off so it makes more sense. But a super awesome shoe and I'm glad that I got it when I did. And then rounding off the OG colorways, we've got the OG of the OGs, the Chicago Air Jordan 1s. This is the 2015 pair. I wish I had more pairs of these. This is another pair that I grabbed off of either Goat or StockX. I think this might actually be the first pair I grabbed off Goat. I grabbed it in... Either it was the end of 2015 or the beginning of 2016, but I spent, I think, like $3.40 for it. Again, crazy good price. I should have bought a bunch of pairs of these, but it's a shoe that I love to wear. It's super easy to rock with a lot of different stuff just because it's such a classic colorway. And uh, if these ever re-release, I'm going to triple up on these guys because these guys are crazy fire. I love these shoes. And this is really the Jordan that started it all, so you kind of got to have a pair of these. I guess I shouldn't say that. I hated when people said that when I first started doing YouTube and watching sneaker YouTube because a lot of these shoes I just couldn't afford, and uh, I shouldn't be setting that sort of extra expectation on people. So no, you don't have to have these, but this is a great shoe to have if you can grab it. And if you don't have these and you don't want to spend the resale price, then just wait for the re-release because eventually Jordan Brand is going to drop a new version of these at some point. We just don't know when. Then getting into the last couple sneakers in the collection and into some Jordan 1 collaborations, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Union LA Storm Blues. This is actually the shoe that I proposed to my wife in. This is also the shoe that uh, I have in my emoji if you guys become channel members. It's a crazy shoe. There was this picture of me creasing these shoes that it didn't go viral, but it got pretty popular on like Reddit. <laughs> so there was that. But this is the Sifo Crease Air Jordan 1s, as I like to call them. Super clean look. Definitely bright, definitely out there, and uh, is one of my favorite collaborations of all time. I think Union LA killed this shoe, and again, because I proposed to my wife in this shoe, and there was such an important moment in my life that happened while I was wearing this shoe, I'll never get rid of this sneaker, ever. Next up, we've got the other Union LA Air Jordan 1, the black toe version of the shoe. A lot of people prefer this colorway because it is a little bit more wearable. Even though I didn't propose to my wife in this shoe, I still have a lot of good memories in this sneaker. I wore this shoe when I went to Japan and the Philippines. I actually spent a lot of time in Japan with Teddy. Oh, it's Teddy, if you guys watch his channel. 
general. So there's a lot of good uh, new experiences that were had in this shoe, like trying Japanese food. That was kind of crazy. So um, there's that. But a really great looking sneaker. And again, another awesome sneaker that will probably never leave my collection because not only is there a lot of good memories with this shoe, but it's also a fire colorway. Like this colorway is sick. Then the second to last sneaker that I have in my collection, we've got the off-white Air Jordan 1 UNCs. So this shoe I grabbed like two days after it came out for way more money than it was worth at the time. I think I paid like 1800 bucks, which is the most I'd ever spent on a sneaker at the time um, because I thought that the review would do really well. It didn't do that well. Really at the time, I kind of lost money. Now it's back up to around like, I don't know, I think the shoe could probably sell for like 2200 bucks. So I really made money in the end, but I'm not gonna get rid of this sneaker. I love this shoe. It's the only Off-White Air Jordan one that I wear. And uh, Virgil just knocked it out of the park with this one. This is such a clean look and I love it. I love the blue that he used. I really like the material choices and somehow my pair is not yellowed that much, which I'm really happy about. And then the final shoe in my collection, which I'm sure most of you guys know what it is because I've talked about this shoe so much on the channel, but that is my signed pair of Off-White Air Jordan 1 Chicago's. This pair I got because I went to an event. I met Virgil Abloh there. I got to talk to him for about 10 minutes about design, which is one of the coolest experiences in my entire life. And uh, he signed my shoe for me, which I got for retail. So there's that. Obviously this year Virgil Abloh passed away, which was incredibly sad. Um, rest in peace to a legend. He truly is one of the most influential sneaker designers of all time. And the fact that I was able to meet him and spend time with him and pick his brain a little bit is truly something that I will never forget. I mean, even if I stop collecting sneakers or stop doing sneaker YouTube, it's still something that I will really remember. It's still a pivotal point in my life for a lot of reasons. One of them being that this sneaker review and the vlog that went along with this really helped catapult my channel to where it is now. So Virgil Abloh genuinely had a legitimate impact on the growth of my channel and the growth of my career. Like this has become my career. So this shoe and the experience that went along with this shoe um, means that this is probably the most important shoe in my collection. I mean, truly, it's a shoe that I will never get rid of, but to have one of his most iconic designs is pretty incredible, and uh, yeah, I love it. I love this shoe. But guys, on that note, it is time to wrap up the video for today. You guys have checked out my entire sneaker collection. For those of you that stuck around and watched the whole video, make sure to comment something like, I don't know. If you made it to the end, comment Sock Fowler. There you go, Sock Fowler, because I'm the Sock Don. Not the Louis Vuitton Don, the Sock Don. But at this point, I gotta go edit this like five hours worth of footage. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.